fairer than day. The struggles of this time and this world are gone. There'll be no more death. I don't know how many funerals I've preached since I've been saved. I guess it's in the hundreds. I don't know, a bunch of them. But there'll be no more death. No more sorrow. No more crying. You know what? Every now and then I have to take me a pain pill. I've got arthritis. <laughs> the harder you get, the more pain you get. Isn't that right? But it says that there will be no more pain. No more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For all the former things shall be all past. A wonderful place, a wonderful time, a wonderful Savior who struggled on this cross. And he struggled there bearing your sins and mine. <coughs> that we could go and transcends this life. Go far beyond. So James, lay Every member, every believer, keep your eyes beyond Amen. Amen. on the goal at home. Heaven is home. I'm looking forward to it. Praise His name. A great message. Great word from God. Amen. It's been my joy for many years to present Bibles to people. It's probably the best kind of gift I give. And uh, in this office, it falls to me often to, uh, to do that. I've given it to graduates, to uh, ordained preachers and pastors, to ordained deacons. I've given it to brides and grooms. I've placed it in caskets. Uh, I really like this one. I'm, we're going to present this to James to be something that uh, I know that he already has a Bible. Probably like us, we are blessed with the Word of God. He may have several copies. I asked the clerk, I said, yeah, you got one with pictures in it. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure he can read or not. She said, no, we don't have any Deacon's Bibles with just pictures. But she's got a, got a few pictures in it. She'll like them. She's got the maps in the back. Our, uh, one of our Deacon's wives has inscribed it there for you. It'll be a wonderful keepsake, but it's intended to be wore out. So you begin to do that. Uh, I'm going to put that here. Put this right here, and uh, I'm going to make this presentation. We'll come to the part of the service where uh, for the laying on of hands, and we're going to ask all the ordained men in the church to participate in this. Uh, I'm also going to ask uh, Alan and Thomas if you'd participate as well. We've got enough sense to know that God's already ordained y'all, and uh, y'all have taken this journey every step that James has taken. So we don't want you to miss out on this, and we want you to do that. In just a minute, I'm going to ask James to come right here. I'm going to ask him to kneel in front of the communion table and place his hands, both of his hands, right here on the Word of God. And while he's knelt there with his head bowed, I want each of you men to come in your own time and uh, very quietly and uh, silently, just uh, so that only James can hear, just whisper in his ear or talk over his head. Put your hands, lay your hands on his head or shoulders on his arms, just put your hands on him and I want you to have prayer with him here for just a second. We're going to take as long as we need to take for this. But we're not conferring anything uh, to, to James except that which was conferred to us. This is a sign that we're saying we're, we're of a brotherhood. And we're of a, we, uh, we are planters and sowers. We're servants, as Brother Mackey said. We're, we serve the same master and the same one who called us has called you. And uh, listen, 
sometimes there's nobody better in the world to encourage you, James, than someone who has been called with your same call. They will be the first ones you go to for help and for assistance, for strength, for wisdom. And uh, I tell you what, when I, I've always had a wonderful relationship with deacons wherever I've served. And I find that the men who have served many years as deacon always have a word for me, always have something to say and have, a, have an idea. So keep in, keep in touch with those. Of, you may serve at uh, Walnut Grove the rest of your life, but if, wherever God leads you, uh, you'll be a part of his church wherever you go. And uh, you'll be a deacon some way or another. Whether that church recognizes it or not, you'll be a servant. This time, James, I, I'm going to ask if you would to... I'm going to sign that if you come here and kneel, there's a certificate of ordination. It's my honor to serve, sign this as his pastor. We have a place for a signature of the chairman of deacons, but also a signature for the ordination council. I have a pen right here. And uh, gentlemen, if you, if you come forward and lay hands on James and pray with him, I wish that you would sign this so that he'd have a record of your presence here today. Um, as feeble as his mind already is, in a few years it's going to really get bad. And, uh, he'll, he'll be able to look at this and say, well, look at there. Look who was there and came and laid hands on me. I, I love making fun with James and picking at him because he and I are a lot alike. Our wives keep telling us that. And I, I guess there's no need in trying to deny it any longer, but I love it and I appreciate it. And I'm awfully honored to be his pastor. I'm going to ask if his dad would come and begin the service here, laying on hands. Thank you. 